Hey, good morning everybody and welcome back to the channel. Well, we've been having a mixed bag of solar conditions in the past week or so. Today's going to be another mixed bag. We've got some sun coming in. Going to catch a little solar, a little rain, a little everything. Pretty nice day. Okay guys, well to follow up on that last video, if you recall uh, that 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery by Lee time, we had tied up to 500 watts of solar and we were going to see how long it would run that refrigerator and I no sooner left you guys and never saw the sun again. So the battery did very, very well. Uh, with the minimal amount of solar, and I mean like no solar was coming in as soon as I wanted to continue the test. I only got a couple of days on this before I had to pull it out and slide another one in with a little more capacity and storage for the conditions that we had. And now we're getting some good sun uh, and this one's doing fine. The battery worked as it should have. There was no problems with that smart battery there. And I wasn't able to get exactly what I wanted out of it. And under full sun conditions, I think this would have held up running that refrigerator just fine. But it just wasn't getting any more of a charge from day to day. So had to conclude that test, slid that in. And then I wanted to tell you what happened after I slid that one in. I ended up popping a couple of fuses. And I'll just do a short review here of the system that we're working with right here before I... Uh, show you what happened with those fuses blowing. We've got this uh, MPPT from Victron solar charge controller, 100 uh, volt 30 amp charge controller tied into a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter from Reliable Electric. And then here's everything in. Got a couple of fuses and some breakers. There's another fuse down there. solar isolator switch and in earlier videos I showed you uh, I used to have a smaller inverter in here and I had 100 amp fuses uh, 100 amp fuse there and 100 amp fuse there and I mentioned that uh, once I put that 2000 watt in there I would bump it up to 200 amp fuse which I did not do and in the meantime uh, we've got some company visiting here, and and I told them that this was safe to use for a hair dryer, which, as you know, they pull a lot of wattage. And we put it on the we put the hair dryer on the watt meter here, and it was pulling about 800 watts. And I knew I was covered uh, in that respect, and it was doing well. And we let her rip. And the one thing that had slipped my mind was the various settings of a, of a electric hair dryer. And uh, when the person was drying their hair, they, I thought it was never going to go over 800 watts. They clicked it up to a higher setting and this thing started screaming and whistling and, and the system shut down and I probably scared my guest half to death with that. I was nearby. I came in here and I quickly started troubleshooting to see what had happened. Didn't have my glasses on even and I, you know, I quickly disconnected everything and troubleshooted from start to finish. I even took a look at those fuses without my glasses. I originally thought everything was fine and, and I spent, uh, probably a half an hour going back and forth through every single little thing saying, now, how could that be? The battery voltage was off. Uh, I put the multimeter on here and the multimeter was reading the battery at like 13.25, which is about what I expected the voltage to be. Uh, the battery monitor was showing it at 14.2. Uh, everything was going uh, kind of haywire. And then I would reconnect everything, uh, flip my breakers back into action and turn the inverter back on. And it still chirped and whistled and made all kinds of horrible noises. And 
Then put my glasses on, got on my hands and knees, squared myself up to the fuse, and on that bottom fuse, I'll show you right there, you can see right there, that thing is melted in half. So, uh, my mistake, operator error, and I should have had my 200 amp fuses in place. I was still trying to get by with the 100 amp, which is not what you want on a 2000 watt inverter. So I'm making the mistakes so you don't have to and pointing this out where I uh, failed to uh, upgrade my 100 amp fuses to 200 amp. Now this did exactly as it should. Uh, that, on that bottom one, it melted, it disconnected everything. Uh, this other fuse right here, it was well on its way to melting and you can kind of see how uh, it was getting hot and bubbling and whether it's disconnected and broken underneath that finish or not, we'll never know because it's going into the trash can. But uh, the bottom one completely melted in half and this one was well on its way. So I exceeded the 100 amp rating and I should have had my 200 amp fuses, which are now in place. And once I diagnosed it, it was a simple fix. I plopped the 200 amp fuses in there, fired it up, and everything worked as it should. Uh, the battery voltage read correctly. The, the percentage of the battery, uh, as, as far as its capacity, is accurate. Everything was fine. The whole problem was like I said I was going to do in the past when I put that in there, and I know some of you guys mentioned it to me too, is bump up the size of those fuses. I procrastinated a little bit, put it out of my mind, and paid the price. So always good to have some spare fuses, have it fused appropriately for the size of your system, and you won't have any problems. So these blade fuses, I know a lot of people uh, don't like them. I had that one 200 amp fuse on the back of those Chins battery system pop and that was again an error on mine where I made an inadvertent contact in the system and popped that fuse. So and it saved that system and then these saved this system as they're designed to do. So I'm happy with these fuses. They work well for me, uh, whether they do for you guys or not and what type of fuses you use, that's up to you. I still use them but you really want to have them sized appropriately. So now 200 amp fuses right there. I'm never going to exceed that, so I say, and that's what happened. So another thing that was possible that happened at the same time the hair dryer was running was uh, the refrigerator was still tied in and I don't know, it could have kicked into the defrost mode. Suffice it to say, I was undersized on my fuses, and if I would have had those 200 amp fuses in there, uh, all systems would have been fine as they are now. So, I just wanted to show you guys that I made another another mistake, and try and spare you from making the same one. It happened, and now it's all good. <laughs> Okay, so here we are, and I'm going to show you guys what had happened on the watt meter. So in the first outlet, uh, this hair dryer is now plugged in. And I'll give you a shot of the hair dryer right here. And on the second one is the refrigerator. And you can see the refrigerator is running at 78 watts. We'll go back to here, and then we'll click that on. and 900 watts and the system is doing just fine so we know we've got 900 watts here and about 70 some watts on the refrigerator 200 amp fuses holding strong no problems whatsoever but now yesterday during this uh, same time frame 
the refrigerator could have been in defrost when that hair dryer kicked up over a thousand watts or, or thereabout it just exceeded that 100 amps on the fuses melted that one in half and that one was well on its way to melting in half too so anyway just a mistake on my end uh, I guaranteed the person who is my helper right here right now with her hair dryer that everything was fine and I'm sorry if I scared her to death when that thing blew because it made a lot of noise but it did as it was supposed to and protected the system the fuses are cheap to replace and I always have extras of various sizes and now I'm size appropriate for the needs of this particular system so then just review I've got 500 watts of solar coming in here 2000 watt pure sine wave 200 amp fuses a couple of breakers battery monitor and right now we've got the 300 watt or 300 amp hour red odo 12.8 volt lithium iron phosphate battery and thanks as always for tuning in everybody i hope you got something out of this video i sure learned once again to check and double check and like I said, I'd procrastinated about getting the proper size fuses in there and caused a little more panic than was needed back in here. And it's turning out to be a beautiful solar day. Catch you guys on the next one. Aloha. Beautiful day. All systems are go.